Hi people, it's Sarkovist here with my review for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. The first part will be spoiler free, whereas the second will be filled with crucial plot points, so please don't watch the whole video if you're looking to be surprised. Zack Snyder returns to the DC Cinematic Universe with his iconic brand of dark storytelling and over the top action. Interestingly, despite the film's overtly cheesy title, Batman v Superman takes itself very seriously, and provides a fair amount of quiet dialogue scenes to supplement the carnage of the film's later moments. The core strengths of the film are the fantastic acting performances from every main cast member, the creative visual effects and cinematography, as well as the willingness to deviate from some of the characters' traditional behaviours, giving Batman v Superman a somewhat refreshing feel. A special mention goes to Ben Affleck's portrayal of Batman. He manages to encapsulate both Bruce Wayne's suave playboy sensibilities with Batman's fearlessness and unwavering tenacity. This is also a far more brutal version of Batman than we're used to, and that's saying something for Batman. Unfortunately for Henry Cavill, his part doesn't leave much room for creative license when it comes to breathing life into the Man of Steel. He definitely comes across as otherworldly, which is a plus, but even as Clark Kent, Cavill's performance never came close to Affleck's. Something I'd say is very important to consider though, is that Batman v Superman is aimed at audiences with a reasonable understanding of DC Comics. Several references to various DC characters are littered throughout the film, some subtle and others very obvious. Your understanding of DC will definitely affect how much you get out of the film, Long-term fans will love it, whereas newcomers may actually be left feeling confused. Furthermore, I definitely recommend watching Man of Steel before seeing this, as its events play heavily into Batman's motivations. The story itself is jam-packed, to the point where it can feel a bit meandering at times. However, the core narrative is never forgotten, and the pacing is well done for a film of this length. After an early action scene that offers an interesting perspective of events from Man of Steel, the film takes its time to establish supporting characters, their motivations, and overall tone. This slower pace makes for a very satisfying payoff during the film's riveting third act. The easiest way to recommend this film is to consider whether or not you're a fan of Zack Snyder as a director. If you've enjoyed his past films, then you'll likely enjoy Batman v Superman. If not, then you may at least enjoy the clash of two such iconic characters. Again though, it definitely helps to have a reasonable knowledge of DC Comics. Warning, spoilers ahead. So now that we're into spoiler territory, I can freely talk about some of the main characters in this film, how well they were portrayed, how well they were realised, and let's start with... Batman, because I thought Batman was the best thing about this film, to the point where I wish that Ben Affleck's version of Batman, combined with Zack Snyder's direction, was actually its own separate film. One of my favourite scenes in this entire film was when he was clearing out a room of bad guys in one of the most brutal fashions I've ever seen. Whereas in, I guess, the Nolan films, we saw Christian Bale's Batman being quite economical, quite ninja-like in terms of how he dispatched his enemies. In this version, he just goes in like a tank. He's just throwing stuff at people, punching them extremely hard. He uses guns, not necessarily to shoot and kill someone, but as a distraction. He's a very, very brutal version of Batman. In fact, I'm pretty sure he must have killed at least someone because he punches one guy in the head so hard, he must have snapped his neck. <laughs> it just feels like the impact of his blows was so strong. Very much in the same way that in Man of Steel, Superman must have killed someone. Well, he did kill people because that's one of the setups of why Bruce Wayne is so angry at him. Um, I feel the same way about Batman. Not to the same extent, but God, it, the way he takes out people in his film is just so aggressive. And I like it because it's refreshing. It's not what we've seen so much before. And there's a great bit at the beginning where he saves some people. They're in the basement in a cage and uh, they're actually afraid of him even though he saved them because he's built up this persona over the years of being this demon, this devil figure. And when you first see him, he's kind of up in the uh, corner of a room on, on the ceiling and he scurries across pretty much like a demon. It's very cool to see. And Bruce Wayne, there's both Bruce Wayne just not 
dressed up as Batman, and then there's billionaire playboy Bruce Wayne, and we don't see a lot of billionaire playboy Bruce Wayne, but we see a lot of Bruce Wayne being a detective. And that's something I quite liked as well. You do see Detective Bruce Wayne, he's having to figure things out, he's having to track down the kryptonite, discover who's behind things. Although, I thought for someone who's meant to be so intelligent, he was a little bit foolish when he was basically being goaded on by Lex Luthor writing all those messages. I mean, you're meant to think that's, well, he's meant to think that's Superman, and yet, well, it's just, that would be so out of character for him to do that. But, uh, I mean, this wasn't necessarily a totally faithful version of Batman, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. I liked the fact it was different. I didn't want to just see, oh, Christopher Nolan, Christian Bale's Batman. I wanted to see something different, and, well, he looked different. He was far bulkier. He wasn't as stealthy. He was more about just getting there and punch them. And I just thought Ben Affleck did a solid job of acting him. It was very impressive, and, you know, I, I wish he had his own film. And then you had Henry Cavill's Superman, which was done in exactly the same way it was done in Man of Steel. I just find his acting, because of the role, because it is limiting, just to be underwhelming, nothing about it makes you want to see more of him. His powers, his abilities as Superman are so strong, he can do so much, he can destroy so much, but because he doesn't really have to fear anything, apart from Kryptonite, his character just doesn't have the complexities and I guess the inner torment to the same extent that Bruce Wayne does. And so I really enjoyed scenes more with Ben Affleck's uh, Bruce Wayne. Not to say that there isn't conflict. He has his moral principles that he has to dabble with, especially when he's confronted with the idea of I have to kill the Batman to save my mother. And uh, it's a great moment where he gets angry at Lex Luthor and his eyes are just burning. And he probably would have killed him if he thought that would have saved his mother. Uh, I think the thing about Zack Snyder is that principle that we know from the comics where these heroes can't kill just isn't a big of a priority in these films so i loved ben affleck's batman but with henry cavill's superman i don't know it's definitely not a reason to go and see this film definitely not the fight scene between them i did enjoy i was really wondering how they were going to pull that off uh, but they did it very well and that mechanical bat suit with the blue eyes is just the most amazing epic cool looking thing i mean you know obviously it's a subjective thing but it's just yeah i was in awe of that he looked so cool in that suit and the fight i mean it's it it's difficult to establish that it was good that he used some clever techniques at the beginning to try and trap him but then again he didn't seem to be very aware of superman's abilities i can only assume he knew all too well that those turrets wouldn't do anything to him maybe it was just meant to make him feel like superman Superman feel like he had the advantage, I don't know. But those two initial traps he sprung just, I mean, they were useless and he should have known that. But yeah, the gladiator match and the fact that Batman won and had that kryptonite spear in his hand, that was a great moment, but didn't kill him in the end. Although it was fantastic to see uh, that cut because obviously earlier on he says, do you bleed? You will, and he makes him bleed, so he fulfills his promise there. Oh, and I mean, there are two moments that really drive home the fearlessness of Batman, of Bruce Wayne. Initially, it's when he's running into the rubble, all the dirt's being kicked up, and whereas everyone else is running away, he's just going in to save someone. That just was a fantastic bit of imagery there. Unfortunately, that was spoiled by one of the earlier trailers, uh, because that was a, just one of the best moments in there and also the bit where the batmobile is immobilized superman says you know get rid of the batman and even though this guy is almighty all powerful and batman is only in his basic suit he has no kind of advantage he'll die if he tries to fight him he just outright threatens him so away from the two main players which as i say one was really good other one needed to be there obviously but not a selling point so there was also wonder woman and she wasn't in it too much but I liked the fact she was there. Uh, I think her character, again, looked very different from what she used to look like in, you know, the traditional outfit. But that was definitely a benefit because that outfit would not have translated well to this tone of film. You've also got Lex Luthor, played by Jesse Eisenberg. I mean, we all knew that was going to be a bit of a weird casting uh, choice. And although he's nothing like what we know of Lex Luthor in the past... Well, well, I shouldn't say nothing because he's got, you know, the core principles. He's, he's intelligent. He's evil. Uh, he He's after the kryptonite. Those classic things. His, I guess his behaviours, his mannerisms are very manic. To the point where it does make me think, 
is there enough room in the DC universe for yet another totally crazy, unhinged seeming villain? He was good. It was a good performance. It worked for what it was. I liked it. The action scenes at the end were great, but the thing is, I just feel a bit tired saying, oh, the action scenes were great because these days, action scenes are always great. I mean, if, if there's anything Hollywood's mastered, it's CGI action scenes. But then again, I thought that the classic Batman clearing out a room scene was more exciting than the final battle with Doomsday. Speaking of Doomsday, I think they needed to have a reason for Wonder Woman, Batman and Superman to team up to fight something. But yeah, I don't know. It kind of diluted that really cool showdown that they had. Batman v Superman, that's the name of the film. Uh, so... You know, I wouldn't say it was, oh yeah, it was Doomsday, Doomsday's in the film. I mean, he was, it was a good fight, he had cool powers, but it doesn't add to the quality of the film, if that makes any sense. It was a good fight, but no better than, like, the hundreds of other, oh, we've got a team up to fight the final boss battles that we've seen in so many superhero films. Tonally, this is a very unique film, but structurally, it's a very familiar film. Also, some characters, Holly Hunter's Senator... She was quite good for what she was in the film. Also, Jeremy Irons, Alfred, again, very good. Reminded me of the version of Alfred we have in Gotham, if you ever watched that. It's quite good, worth a watch. But yeah, it's it's a film that I'm going to acknowledge has been slammed by critics. I, however, did enjoy the film. Very happy for going to see it. Do not feel like I was at all ripped off. And If you're a DC fan and you want to see Batman fight Superman, you will not be disappointed. Maybe... Well, I wanted to say there that the fight could have been a bit longer, but I'm remembering Man of Steel with the endless fight between Zod and Superman. I'm thinking, actually, no, maybe it was it was the perfect length. It was a, it was a good showdown. I mean, when your film is called Batman v Superman, you have to try and judge that fight, and it was good. I enjoyed it. It's a very long film. That's something you'll know before watching it. I wouldn't say it really fills its length in the middle, but I think. After that initial scene where you see the different perspective of Metropolis, which is a really, really good, enjoyable scene. When I was watching that, I was thinking, yes, this is so good. But I know after this, the film's going to start to slow down. And it did. The thing about a film slowing down is it isn't inherently bad. I mean, you've got to do that to pace the film out. But with such an epic action scene to begin with, you kind of think, you do feel it a bit in a film of this length. But again, uh, unnecessary. There's also the not-so-subtle references to Flash, Aquaman, and Cyborg. It's one of those things where if you are a DC fan, you'll be saying, yes, I know those guys, I'm really looking forward to the Justice League film. But if you don't, you'll be saying, who are these people and why do I care? So, uh, I think what I should say at the end here to recommend it, I wouldn't pay too much attention to what critics have said of this. It's not a perfect film, it absolutely has its flaws, but... I think you'll enjoy this film, and to a DC fan, to a Zack Snyder fan, it's actually, I say, essential viewing. So, if you decide to see it, enjoy it. If you have seen it and you just wanted to know my opinion, well, I'd be interesting to hear yours. As always, people, thanks very much for watching, and see you next time.